what's going on what's going on welcome back to the channel one man's walk i am your host kamal back at you with another one so what do we have for you today we're finally here i finally have my four favorite rap albums as you can see by the thumbnail it's real so let's see who won you guys ready i'm ready super excited let's get to it right after this intro clean your house music you can clean too Welcome back. So like I said, we are finally here. We are finally at the point in March Madness. We're at this point with the final four and now the uh, final two. And here we are with the final four. Let's get to our final two and let's see who ultimately is the greatest rap album to me. I want to say first off, what, what am I saying? Let's do a little housekeeping. If you guys have not already done so, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post bell notifications so that way you don't miss any of this amazing content. As you can see behind me right now, the latest video was up. This is the Yeezy 500 blush. Um, as you can see by it, the title, sizing, styling, on foot. So I think you guys will like it if you're into that. Also the Morbius trailer up. Uh, Morbius movie reaction is up as well. So the two latest videos, so feel free to check that out as well as the other amazing content on the channel. One thing I'm gonna throw out there and then we're gonna get started. If you guys, you guys always see this Xbox controller right here. I do have the Series S. I do game and game a lot. Uh, I said I was gonna put it on the channel and then never put it on the channel. And so I started recording, I play a lot of Destiny, so I would do, you know, stuff I record on there, PVE, PVP. But if you guys want that kind of content, let me know and I'll be happy to throw it up as well. I think I'm gonna do it as a tester. So we are finally here. We're gonna get to it, the final four. Now I could not get the case for this. I don't know what I did with it, but so you guys know, this is the original one. I don't know what the other one looked like, but this is what the original one looked like. There it is right there reasonable doubt this is the original one this has the 14 songs not the 15 this does not have can i live part two on it this is the original 14. ready to die there it is right there ready to die mob deep the infamous r.i.p the prodigy the great top five lyricists to me all time don't at me notorious big life after death and that album, you guys know I did a review of that. You guys can check that out. It's only fit and I wore masses on my universe shirt. Who's going to be He-Man in this picture? But anyway, back to this. It was so incredibly hard putting this together. In my mind, I thought, okay, this is going to be pretty easy. I remember these albums. I already know what's going to happen. I already know who's going to win, blah, blah, blah. And then it came time to do it. And what kept coming in my head, all jokes aside, was Nick Wright. Um, where he's always talking about I'm dripping in objectivity and take integrity. And so I said to myself, man, you know what? I legitimately should play these albums just to make sure certain matchups still work or who I think is still the better album. Because some albums I thought initially like Big Pun, Capital Punishment, which used to be on my list, didn't make it. There were some other albums I had on here. Once Upon a Time, Machiavelli was on here and some albums just didn't make it anymore and I needed to be able to justify albums and who legitimately won and I couldn't go off a name. And just because of this name doesn't mean it was a better album. When I play them back to back today, how do I feel about both albums? How many, al how many songs did I skip? So let's get to it, let's get ready, let's recap. Now that we've gotten all of the formalities out of the way. So there's a recap. Uh, the four number one C's were the Notorious B.I.G., Dr. Dre, The Chronic, um, Jay-Z, Blueprint, as well as Tupac, All Eyes on Me. Based by the showing of my four final albums, only one number one C made it straight through, and that is Life After Death. Um, I've already done an album review on The Chronic, so you guys have my thoughts on that. If you guys want, I can do one on Blueprint, as well as All Eyes on Me. I do plan to get a lot of these albums that are on here out throughout the year so you guys can have an idea of how I feel about these albums. 
Um, so I will look for that. So, but if you have one that's requested, I may try to move it up a little further, but I do plan a lot of the albums that are on here will get reviews on this channel. I'm going to start doing those every Tuesday and doing a new album every Tuesday for you guys, or a retroactive album, a classic album, what I consider to be a classic album. I will try to do that every Tuesday. So in the 32, so we had uh, Life After Death beat out MOP First Family for Life, Juvenile 400 Degrees beat out Rick Ross, Teflon, Don, and so Life After Death and Juvenile 400 Degrees met in round 32, and of course Life After Death moved on to the Sweet 16. So then we have Jeezy Thug Motivation 101 and Smith and Wesson is Shining. Now, on face value, I thought and I said these were both top 10 albums to me. And I was like, man, Jeezy's gonna beat that easily. But when I went back and actually played them, though the Jeezy still did not have a lot of records I skipped. I think I skipped maybe three, three or so, and it's way down in the CD. That's how much respect I have for the Thug Motivation. I just thought the Shining front to back was just a better CD. And it wasn't like I went back and I was like, yo, the Jeezy isn't what I thought it was. The Jeezy was still fire. I just thought the, 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 the Smith & Wesson The Shining was just a better album to me. And so that did move on. And then Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid, Mad City, Red Man, There's a Dark Side. I love that Red Man, There's a Dark Side, but that Kendrick Lamar is a monster. And so Kendrick Lamar went on to face Smith & Wesson The Shining in um, round 32. The next group we have, we have Scarface, The Diary, and Drake so far gone. Scarface moved on and that regard and then Nazomatic and AZ Pieces of a Man. Now I do love AZ Pieces of a Man, but I think I have to put a little bit more respect on Nazomatic because in going back and replaying it again, really having to play it for the sake of this and where it really falls, I did enjoy it much more than I thought I did. Really One Love is the only record on there that I'm really like ugh, against and that's more so the beat than anything, but I did want to give respect, but that AZ Piece of Man was fire. And then the last two to meet into this, um, so and so we had um, Joe Button, New Music, Beat Out Locks, We Are The Streets. I did a We Are The Streets album review, you guys can check that out. Um, and we had Wu-Tang enter the 36 Chambers against um, Lloyd Banks, All or Nothing, Live It Up. And so I had the Wu moving on. So now in the 32, we got Notorious B.I.G. Life After Death vs. Juvenile 400 Degrees, Big Moved On. Smith and Wesson vs. Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid, Mad City, Kendrick Lamar moved on. We have Scarface, The Diary um, vs. Nas Ilmatic, Nas moved on. And then we have Joe Button, Moon Music 2 vs. Wu-Tang, Enter the 36 Chambers, and Joe moved on. Now, there could be a little controversy there for some people. I thought very highly of the Joe Button, Moon Music 2, and thought it was worthy of being a Sweet 16 album. That's just how I feel and replaying it, it still held true to how I felt it was all those years back in 2005, when I was playing it probably the majority of 2005. And so right now, our Sweet 16 are in the first bracket, Life After Death versus Good Kid, Mad City, Kendrick Lamar, Nas Matic versus Joe Button, Mood Music. Moving on to the Elite Eight for this bracket, Life After Death and Nas Matic. Again, I thought for sure Moon Music, I was going to love it more, but in playing it again, I can't lie, man. Illmatic sounded a lot better. When I play, and it's only 10, really nine songs, right? So it makes it harder. The Moon Music, in playing it again, there were a couple records I did skip that I didn't love as much on second go round or records that were kind of filler. And then Nas, because it's really just nine songs, I mean, it's 10 if you count the intro. It doesn't have much room forever. And so really in playing it, I'm like, yo, I really do like all these records. And so it legitimately moved on to the Elite Eight. I was very shocked. So we have Life After Death versus Nas Matic in the Elite Eight. So now let's move on to the next bracket. And then, and, and, um, and, um, of course, because you know our final four, Big moved on. So Big did beat out Illmatic in the final four. So Big is our first entry into the final four. Next uh, bracket. All Eyes On Me is a 1C beat out J-Rock Redemption. Mace is an 8C beat out Kanye West Graduation. And so Pac and Mace faced off in the 32. T.I. Trap Music um, is a 5C beat out 50 Cent Power to Dollar. It's an unreleased album, but it's an absolutely amazing album. I will do that um, on here is one of my reviews one week. I do love that album. And 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying is a four CD beat out Lloyd Banks, Course of the Inevitable. Course of the Inevitable is an amazing CD. Highly slept on, but it's an amazing CD. 
So then we have um, DMX is dark and hell is hot mob deep murder music. I actually have murder music moving on. Now, I do like his Dark and Hell is Hot, but when I played them back to back, and I remember I thought Mob Deep Murder Music was a highly slept on album, it legitimately was just really great. It's so many great records on there. I skipped maybe one, one or two on that CD. That CD is fire front to back. I found myself skipping more of his Dark and Hell is Hot than I remembered skipping initially playing it. And so that moved on. And then as a, I mean, narrow victory here, Cuban Lynx did beat out Operation Stack Ola Looney's, but I'm telling you that Operation Stack Ola Looney CD was fire. It had some like three or four records in the middle that were skippers, but honestly speaking, Cuban Lynx, the purple tape to me had a ton of skips too. Um, a ton of skits I wasn't into, and so that had skips, but I ultimately felt the records were just a little bit better on Cuban Lynx, and so that moved on. And then lastly, AZ Do or Die beat out Outcast AT Alien and Jay-Z Reasonable Doubt beat out Jamal Last Chance No Break. So then we have All Eyes On Me versus Mace Harlem World is a 32, T.I. Trap Music versus Get Rich or Die Trying. How T.I. managed to face T.I. back to, I mean, managed to face 50 back to back. I did not plan it that way, just how it, I guess the bracket worked. I mean, I know it's my bracket, but I wasn't thinking of it in that logic. Mob Deep Murder Music against Raekwon Only Bill for Cuban Links. AZ Do or Die against Jay-Z Reasonable Doubt. So who's going to make our Sweet 16? Well, Pac beat out Mace, so he's in our Sweet 16. I thought T.I. Trap Music was a better CD than Get Rich or Die Trying. I thought so back in the day, and in playing it today, I still felt justified. While Get Rich has bigger records, larger records, more monumental records, as a cohesive CD, there are more songs I skip on that 50 CD. And in T.I., honestly speaking, there was only one song that I legitimately on the top of my head can think I would skip. And depending on how I feel in the setting, I might not even skip that record. It's a front to back amazing CD. I have always had T.I. Trap Music as a top 10 CD and it didn't disappoint because it made its way to the Elite Eight. So, um, T.I. Trap Music, uh, oh, I'm sorry. So T.I. Trap Music, 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying, T.I. Trap Music, Pat moved on. Mob Deep Murder Music, I thought, again, is a better CD than Raekwon Cuban Link. So that moved on to the Sweet 16. Um, and AZ Do or Die lost, or I'm sorry, I should guess I should say this way, Jay-Z Reasonable Doubt beat out AZ Do or Die. So now our Sweet 16 in this bracket, we are looking at Tupac or Lazo Me versus T.I. Trap Music and Mob Deep Murder Music versus Jay-Z Reasonable Doubt. Now, because we know our final four, we know Jay-Z does beat out um, than whoever he faces next. So we'll work on the other side. So we know Jay-Z beat out Mob Deep, but I did have T.I. Trap Music going past Tupac All Lies For Me. Now, I plan on getting a Tupac review up. I know you guys want it. I will get it. I'll give my honest thoughts. I do think that All Lies On Me was worthy of being one of the 16 greatest rap albums to me ever. I just could not move it up higher because to me, there's a lot of records that I skip. There's a lot of records that I'm like, you know what? Is not, it's not my cup of tea. Now the ones that I love, I love, but I don't love everything. And so I did have some skips. And so we had T.I. Trap Music going up against Jay-Z Reasonable Doubt in the Elite Eight. And as much as I love that T.I. Trap Music, I knew Reasonable Doubt was a monster, but in having to play it again, cause it was one of those albums I was originally like, man, I'm not even gonna play it. I already know Reasonable Doubt Fire. And replaying it, man, that Reasonable Doubt is fire. And so Reasonable Doubt had to move on, and that's how we got in our one side of the bracket, Life After Death versus Reasonable Doubt as two Final Four contestants, which I'm so mad. If I really knew, I don't watch college basketball. I did watch the NCAA, I did, I'm sorry, I did watch the Duke-UNC game last night. But if I really knew how to put this bracket together, I might have had a Reasonable Doubt on the other side. So that way it would face life after death in the finals as opposed to, in the, in the, the, the last two standing as opposed to the final four. That's how amazing reasonable that was to me. No skips. Oh my goodness, it was fine. So let's move on to this other side of the bracket. We got the chronic as a one seed going up against the documentary two, not the first documentary. I don't really like that one, but game documentary two. And um, Chronic moved out on that. Definite Dude, which I thought would have beat Al Capone and Noriega on memory. And playing them back to back, I had to put more respect on the Capone and Noriega. I really did love it. And so that beat out um, Definite Dude. 
Outcast Southern Play Holistic beat out Prodigy HNIC. Nas, it was written, beat out Health of Skull. So you guys know I've done a Nas review as well as a chronic review. Those reviews are up. Feel free to check those out. Um, Mozzie, Beyond Bulletproof, beat out Little Kim Hardcore. I loved the Mozzie and surprisingly, man, it was just so good. Had it had other competition, I'm not gonna lie, it might have moved on further. I'm spoiling it because who would win against was a juggernaut. But um and then we had Ready to Die against Styles P Dimebag. And we had Two Pop Me against the World against Jizzle Liquid Swords. I had the Liquid Swords moving on. That Liquid Swords, I had I have sold people forever. That is the greatest Wu CD to put out. I thought it was better than 36 Chambers. I thought it was better than Only Built for Cuban Links. I thought it was better than the double CD. Whatever the Wu CD, Wu Affiliate, whatever you want to put in there, I don't think none of them touching the jizza. That 14 track album is phenomenal. Highly, highly recommend people playing it. That might be one of the first ones I review next because it's just nuts to me. And then, of course, we had Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style, and Styles P, Do You Believe in Ghosts? Or Do You Believe in Ghosts was a mixtape, sort of like I entered in the 50 Cent um, Power to Dollar, as well as the Lloyd Banks um, Live It Up All or Nothing. I did put my personal favorite albums, which may have unreleased, which may have mixtapes. And so that's how we got on there. So in our 32, we got The Chronic going up against Capone War Noriega. I actually thought the Capone Noriega was better than The Chronic. This is where The Chronic stopped for me. Um, yes, similar to uh, how I said with the All Eyes on Me TI, while The Chronic had bigger records, when I played them back to back, I just thought Capone and Noriega had a better CD. And I just, I, I just do. So Capone and Noriega moved on to the Sweet 16. Nas it was written, I thought was better than Outcast Southern Playlistic. Though that Outcast Southern Playlistic was an amazing CD. And so Nas moved on to the Sweet 16. Uh, Mozzie Beyond Bulletproof um, and Ready to Die. In the 32, Jizza, Liquid, in, uh, Liquid Swords, and Snoop Doggy Style. So now this is where it gets a little crazy. So moving on to the Sweet uh, to the Sweet 16, we got Capone and Noriega beating out The Chronic. It was written beating out Outkast, Southern Playalistic. We got Ready to Die beating out Beyond Bulletproof by Mozzie. And in a surprise upset, the Jizza, Liquid Swords beating out Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style. Listen here. When I went back and I played Doggy Style, I was like, oh yeah, Doggy Style's moving on. A couple things I didn't like. One, and it was, it was a 90 thing. The skits were ridiculous. It was just way too many skits that were actual songs. I didn't like that. And that's not to say because the Jizza did have skits. Well, I'm not even here to say the Jizza had skits, but somehow those skits really sounded and blended in well with the CD. It didn't even sound like it wasn't hard on me listening to, I should say. It was very well blended in. I do need, if you guys know, tell me what movie that is, by the way. I need to know what movie that is that the, the skits are playing from. But the Doggy Style skits, I was like, I was over it. And then the actual songs, there's like two or three on there that I was like, yeah, I could probably do without. That they're cool if I'm just playing it, but I never rush to play it. Similar to the Pac and the Chronic, the records that go that are the big records, obviously they're better or bigger records than anything Liquid Source put out. Snoop went three times platinum, the Liquid Swords went gold, right? Similar All Eyes On Me went what? Quadruple platinum and T.I. Trap Music went platinum. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I get they were bigger records. I just think it was a complete album. The Liquid Swords is a complete album, so it moved on. So my Sweet 16 in the top bracket, Capone and Noriega, War Report versus Nas It Was Written and Ready To Die versus Jizza Liquid Swords. So I had Nas It Was Written beating out uh, Capone and Noriega, and I had Ready to Die beating out Liquid Sword. So, ironically enough, in the Elite Eight on both sides, Life After Death was against Thilmatic, and on this side, it was written against Ready to Die. Crazy. Absolutely. I did not plan that, but it was crazy when I saw it. Bracket broke out. Last set here, we got Jay Z The Blueprint, which is the one seed going up against Cameron. Come home with me. That beat out Cameron. We had Common B and Lupe Feud and Food and Liquor, too. Man, I really wish they had been in different brackets because they both deserve to move on. But I did have out Common eking out Food and Liquor, too. Bone Thugs, E1999, 1999, E1999 Eternal beat out uh, Clips, Lord Willings. Kanye West, College Dropout uh, beat out Group Home Living Proof. Master P Ghetto D beat out Phil Ma from the Ruler to the Tudor. Uh, Diplomats 
Diplomatic Immunity beat out The Chronic 2001. They both have flaws on those albums, but I prefer the, the, the Ill, uh, Diplomatic Immunity. Now King Disease beat out J. Cole 2014 Far So Drive. Ma Beat the Infamous beat out Lady May. I will get out of Lady May because I don't think people know and are sleeping on her and she was nuts. So now with my 32, Jay-Z the Blueprint against Common B. Jay-Z moved on, the Blueprint. Bone Thugs E1990 Eternal against Kanye West College Dropout. Bone moved on. Now the Kanye West, this is where, because obviously with all these albums, these are great albums. I had to nitpick the skits. I, I really realized skits were not my thing. And there were so many skits on the college dropout. I was like, come on, man. It was just, it was messing up the flow to me, the CD. And the bone didn't really have that. And I just felt the bone and playing it, I didn't have to like go back and be like, oh, you know, Siri, stop that. So I, I kind of went with that. Master P Ghetto D, I thought is a better album than Diplomats. I know people don't like to put respect on Master P and the No Limit Empire and what they did, but that No Limit Empire was, was legit. And this Master P was a solidifying moment of it. Ghetto D moved on to the Sweet 16, earned its spot. And Mob Deep the Infamous, though I love that Nas King's disease, the Mob Deep Infamous is a monster. And so my Sweet 16 ended up being Jay-Z the Blueprint against Bone Thugs E1990 Eternal. Master P Ghetto D versus Mob Deep the Infamous. We had uh, Mob Deep moving on, as you know, because it made my final four. And we had Jay Z the Blueprint moving on. So then we got to our final eight. What's our eight? Let's get to it. Thank you for everybody who stuck with me. I know I'm speed running through this. I really wanted to do this every week, but man, it was hard trying to play these albums. Some other stuff came up and uh stuff with the equipment too was acting up i could not get it to work right when i was trying to do this video comparable to some of the other ones i do apologize um because i wanted to give people more time to digest this week to week but we got uh in our elite eight let's get to it we have ti trap music versus jay-z reasonable doubt we have Notorious B.I.G. Life After Death vs. Nas Elmatic. We have Nas It Was Written vs. Notorious B.I.G. Ready to Die. We have Jay-Z The Blueprint vs. Mob Deep The Infamous. I am fine with every one of these albums being an Elite Eight album. I'm fine with it. I wish, the only thing I am mad about is again, I don't know how to do the brackets or I would not have put Mob Deep in The Blueprint in the same bracket. I would have had them in different brackets even on the same side, so they could, I still am fine with them facing each other. I just would have wished it would have been in the final four and not the Elite Eight. Because both of those albums deserve to be final four albums. And unfortunately, they weren't going to get the opportunity because only one could move on. And again, take integrity because I thought about redoing the bracket just so I could get it out there. But hey, some as E told me and he posted, he said, look, man, 2022 is about making tough choices. I can't even front. So here we go. So now, in splitting hairs again, I thought, uh, again, Life After Death, I thought was better than Illmatic. Illmatic had run its course. I thought Reasonable Doubt, T.I. Trap Music had made a valiant effort, but Reasonable Doubt is a monster. And so there, it wasn't beating out Reasonable Doubt. The Blueprint, oh, I'll do the other one first. It was written and ready to die. That was very tough. You guys know how I love it. It was written. I've done a review on it. I have not done one on ready to die yet. But it was written, I thought, um, while it is an Elite Eight, I've always had it as a top seven album. Honestly speaking, it's always been a top seven album. When I'm naming them in my head, it's always been number seven. It did not be our ready to die and playing them back to back, but it was extremely close. If someone had told me, hey, I think it was written as ready to die, I don't think I would argue. Like it's extremely close, but I did choose Ready to Die. And then in, in, in all fairness, I played back the Blueprint and I played back the Infamous. I really think the Infamous is just a better album. I still think I would have loved to see them face off in the final four, but in going back and playing the Blueprint, and this is obviously, I, I used to go back and forth and I'm like, what's Jay-Z's best album? And it used to be like, oh, it depends on how it feels, Reasonable Doubt or his Blueprint. And playing them back to back like I have this weekend, I think it's reasonable doubt. Like, I don't even, I'm not even debating it anymore. And playing them back to back, and hopefully I don't, this doesn't age badly, and in like a year, I'm like, nah, it's blueprint. And playing them back to back, 
I personally, or not back to back, but in the rounds, but in having to play them, I thought to myself, Reasonable Doubt is a more complete album. I had more of a feel when I heard it. And I was like, oh, this is nuts. Than I did with the Blueprint. And so here we have our final four. This is where we are. Life After Death versus Reasonable Doubt, which is yeah. Ready to Die versus Mob Deep the Infamous. I'm gonna say this right now. I think I'm gonna go with the, what I consider to be the easier side to do. I personally think as great as Ready to Die is, it's not the infamous. Now when talking to people, everybody's like, what is wrong with you? How do you love the infamous so much? When that came out in 95, I'm a Brooklyn guy through and through. But those Queens dudes, man, that infamous cassette tape, and I don't know if I still have the cassette tape, but the cassette tape is what I had. I ran it into the ground. There is very few, I, I mean, I played the Ready to Die a lot, but I feel like in 2005, 1995, there were very few things I played as much as I played Mob Deep Infinite. The reason why Hell on Earth is a bad CD to me is not because it's a bad CD, is because I'm rating it against the infamous. It is far and away, like it is so amazing. I'm gonna do a review of it. But the beats, P's raps on there, the features, like the 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 nods versus nuts, the Ray Go song is nuts, like the features were fire, everything about that CD. And Shook Ones is what? A top five greatest rap out rap songs ever. Like that, it's my deep the infamous is nuts if you are sleeping go back and play it again please go back and play it again so I, i'm gonna go ahead and put it in there in real time mob deep the infamous let's, let's get it in there now this is where it is shaky and i even do this before i couldn't find it but here's the, the jay-z reasonable doubt These are our final four, guys. Life After Death. Mob Deep the Infamous. I'll probably do that again. This is extremely hard. I'm gonna go with Notorious B.I.G. Life After Death. But it is, whew. That is a tough matchup for me. I just think what I'm gonna give Life After Death the edge for, right? Because Reasonable Doubt is a monster album, definitely a top four album ever, period. I do think Life After Death for being a double CD, when I think of all the double CDs that have come out, All Eyes On Me, the Woo double CD, um, the Nas double CD, Jay-Z's double CD, um, Bones double CD, The Games double CD, The Diplomats double CD, E-40 got a triple CD, him and uh, Too Short got a quadruple CD. I know it's not the same breath of people, but you understand what I'm saying. It's a, and I'm missing people, but there's been a ton of double CDs. The only double CD I've ever played that I thought, man, front to back, is just a monster, is Life After Death. To imagine putting out that many songs and there was legitimately only one skip on there. That uh, nasty boy which should have never made the cut to me. And I'm not big on the intro because the intro was actually sort of like the intro to Ready to Die. So I, I get it's a theme, but I didn't like it. Should have just started with that, um, the next song, Somebody's Gotcha. But start, if you start with Somebody's Gotcha and you play it to the end of the CD minus that one song I said, Nasty Boy, there's not one skit on a double CD. That is so incredibly hard to do when everyone else has failed at it. And so I just, I had to give it the nod. I thought I had to give it the nod. And so reasonable doubt for the 14 records that it is, it's a front to back, no skip. There's not a skip on reasonable doubt. But man, it's one song compared to a double CD that gave so much variety from the ready to uh from the bone record and i did a life after death thing so you guys know but yeah so that's what so we got right here what i consider to be the two greatest rap albums and again it's splitting hairs life after death versus mob deep the infamous 
two great CDs. Two great CDs right here. Amazing project. And I am going to give the nod to Big. Notorious B.I.G. Life After Death. Is my number one CD. I could have wore a big short today, but I figured I would have given it away. And I knew it was going to be a lot harder than that. I will do another 64. It won't be rap albums. I don't know what I'll do next year, but I'll do it again. This was super fun. Um, it was time consuming. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't even know if you guys have stuck around to the end. This is a lot, but I hope you guys do. I'll try to break this up and show the final four in a small clip so you guys get an idea, can run with it. But I hope you guys had fun and enjoyed yourself. I thoroughly enjoyed myself putting this together. Uh, it was grueling, 100%, but it was still fun. Um, as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful, blessed, productive, stress-free day, weekday, weekend, whenever you're listening, however you're listening. I thank you for listening. Till next time.